Welcome to our field expedition in the rainforest of French Guiana. In this short video, we're going to take you with us on our field sampling mission to study the ecology and evolution of environmental mycobacteria, which can cause neglected tropical diseases such as Burley ulcer. We are a consortium of scientists from the United States and France, and together, our goal is to quantify the temporal and spatial variation in the presence of mycobacteria in the environment, and also to identify potential reservoirs, vectors, and hosts. To do this, we take a dive into the tropical aquatic ecosystems and sample all components of these communities. This allows us to study how mycobacteria become established, persist, and disperse in new reservoirs and habitats, and to investigate what conditions lead to disease emergence and outbreaks. Our team collects samples of water, soil, aquatic plants, as well as aquatic invertebrates and fish to discover potential disease-causing organisms, where they live, and what other microbes live on them. We have targeted our sampling to some pristine locations and other locations of deforestation or human disturbances, like this presumed abandoned gold mining site. Our work takes us to remote locations that are only reachable by boat. We work with local guides who have extensive knowledge of the region and of navigating these waters. Some of us get a little scared sometimes. And to be fair, it can get a little rough sometimes. <laughs> or even quite rough. But our guides know exactly what they're doing and we always make it out safe. <laughs> now, remember we're in the rainforest, and so it rains, Are we having fun yet? and it rains, and it rains, and it rains, and it rains. So the first thing we gotta do when we get to where we wanna sample is build shelter so we can sleep in our hammocks and stay dry. Or dry-ish. Now, we are really lucky that our guys are really good at living in the jungle and building shelter. <laughs> <laughs> because this is pretty new to us and we do a lot of standing around and trying to figure it out. One thing we do is we collect thin liana and we use this liana to tie the logs together. We also make sure to start a fire. Fast forward to a couple hours later and we're all set. We have our individual tarps above our hammock. And we also have mosquito screens around our hammock. We've also built a big shelter to do our work and have our meal. Now the next most important thing is food. So what we do is we go fishing. And what did we get tonight? We got a kumaru. A kumaru, as they are called in French Guiana, is a pacu. Pacus are in the same family as piranhas, but unlike the sharp teeth of piranhas, they have square and straight teeth that resemble human teeth. These flat teeth are excellent for grinding up the seeds and the hard-shelled palm fruits that make up a large part of their diet. All right, so now we've learned about pacus and we've eaten one. And we built shelter, and even though it's raining, we're ready for work. Once we start work, everyone gets busy with their individual tasks. Remember I told you that we are sampling different components of these aquatic communities, from the water, the soil, the plants, the invertebrates, and the fish. So let me break it down for you. One of the first things we do is we collect water with syringes. We then place a membrane filter of very small pore size in a filter holder. And we add that filter holder at the bottom of the syringe and push the water through the filter to capture the DNA. Sometimes when the water is murky, we have to push really hard to get the water through the filter. We then store these filters and we'll extract the DNA from them later in the lab.
We also collect DNA from the water in bigger volumes using a peristaltic pump powered by a drill. Just like before, we will store these filters and extract DNA from them in the lab to detect mycobacteria as well as fish and invertebrate DNA. In the meantime, some of us collect the water quality measurements such as pH or temperature using a multi-parameter sensor. Another part of our team specializes on sampling aquatic invertebrates using nets that are very solid and have thin mesh sides. We pour the contents of these nets through sieves to get rid of as much debris as possible and lay out the material in pans to start collecting the invertebrates. This can be a very long process, so we tend to all jump in and help. As you see, they can be pretty hard to spot. Can you see the caddisfly moving around? But with enough effort, we get a good representation of the community. And we'll be able to detect whether certain insect species carry mycobacteria. Finally, our team also focuses on sampling fish using mostly dip nets. Hey look, we got a couple invasive poicilia here. Once we catch fish, we carefully place them directly into our pre-labeled tubes so that later we can analyze which individuals carry mycobacteria. Got it. For fish that are bigger, such as for this beautiful weekly electric fish, what we do is that we use swabs to collect their dermal mucosal microbiome. Then we free the fish and later on we'll extract the DNA from these swabs. Before we leave, an important task is to make sure that all samples are labeled and packaged well so that nothing gets lost or damaged during transport. We now have a lot of samples to bring back to the lab and analyze to learn more about the ecology of mycobacteria. Once we're back, we will work with members on our team that we can see here sampling in the southern U.S. that have expertise in using high-throughput metagenomics to understand the microbiome dynamics associated with mycobacteria. Of course we bring samples, but we also bring so many more experiences back with us. We've navigated the beautiful rivers of French Guiana. We've learned to live in the jungle and build shelter. We've made new friends. We met a pirate. Oh no, that's my boss. That's just Eric in the field. We've crossed paths with so many cool animals like this electric eel that just gulped air. It came in. Some leafcutter ants that are great at cutting leaves, but can also bite humans oh, if they feel threatened. Ow, sounds like it hurts. And very importantly, monkeys. Since Europe's spaceport is located in French Guiana, we had the amazing opportunity to witness a satellite launch. We hope you've enjoyed seeing our field expedition and stay tuned for more videos.